let me let me start by introducing the drivers biodiversity loss most of the human activities that directly impact nature can be classified into one of these five major drivers of biodiversity loss land and sea use change direct exploitation of natural resources pollution climate change and invasive alien species even though all of them are causing widespread impact on the planet a key question we need to answer to design and implement more effective policies is which of these drivers are the most responsible for biodiversity loss. In the context of the planetary boundaries, our study directly or indirectly addresses all of them. <clears throat> On the one hand, we have biodiversity loss, which is closely related to the integrity of the biosphere, but it's also the result of how we manage all the planetary boundaries. On the other hand, some of the boundaries directly relate to the drivers that we propose, such as land system change and climate change, and others relate to pollution, direct exploitation, and they interact affecting the biogeochemical -geo flows. The scientific evidence has been accumulated in the, in the last years, particularly in the last 20 years, to, to respond to our question. However, the efforts to, to address this question have been limited in several aspects. The global rankings of drivers have been usually based on expert opinion rather than, rather than empirical data. They focus on one or few indicators of biodiversity loss. They focus on a specific groups of species, or they consider one or some of the drivers, but not all of them. And as a result, our view on the role of these drivers in nature has been fragmented and, and incomplete in a way. Collecting the necessary evidence to, to respond to this question and analyzing it in an innovative way was a key aspect of our study. We performed a systematic review of over 4,000 empirical studies. We used more than 20 biodiversity indicators covering all aspects of biodiversity, from genes to species to ecosystems. And we focused on studies that dealt with at least two, two drivers simultaneously so, do, so that we could estimate the ranking but also compare the relative importance between the drivers. And as a result, we obtain a much broader and comprehensive view on the role of these drivers in biodiversity loss. Well, as you all might know, science is usually a collaborative effort and this was not the exception. This, this study was uh, possible thanks to the synergy of this, this great multidisciplinary team of authors, each contributing their skills and dedication, for which I'm very, very thankful. Now, go, going back to our key question of which drivers are the most responsible for biodiversity loss, our study aimed at not only establishing the ranking of drivers represented by the numbers one, two, five, but also finding out how different the, the relative importance uh, between them was. Uh, that means that for the different levels of analysis that we consider, not only the rankings can vary, but also the relative importance of the drivers associated to, with the different rankings. So by analyzing all drivers' rankings reported in our very extensive database, we were able to establish for the first time a quantitatively and statistically validated ranking for each of the drivers, along with their respective relative importance for different levels of analysis, as I'm going to show you now. At the global level, we found that land and sea use change and direct exploitation of natural resources have been the main two drivers of biodiversity loss in recent decades. And climate change and invasive alien species have been significantly less important in that period. At the level of different environments, land use change dominates in terrestrial and freshwater environments, but in marine environments, direct exploitation and climate change are the dominant drivers. At the regional level, we found that the, the hierarchies of drivers were broadly consistent, meaning that they were not significantly different between them. But we did find some changes in the order. 
for some of the drivers. For example, land and sea use change and direct exploitation of natural resources ranked first and second for Europe and Central Asia and Asia and the Pacific, but these ranks were reversed for Americas and Africa. The, the biodiversity dimensions refer to the different ways we can look at and measure the diversity of life on Earth. Uh, beyond the, the specific technical definition of the categories that you see here in the first column, the key message here is that looking at all these aspects together gives us a much broader picture of the state of nature compared to looking at individual aspects of biodiversity, such as the number of species or the abundance of a species in a given ecosystem. At this level of analysis, we found that land and sea use change and direct exploitation of natural resources dominate in, in changes related to species populations. But the same drivers are ranked second and fourth for changes uh, related to community composition, where climate change is the dominant driver. So what we see here is that the hierarchy of drivers is significantly different between the different dimensions of biodiversity. And this is a, a very important result. And, and a key message from all of our results is that the importance of the drivers can vary depending on the level of analysis. And that's highly relevant considering the potential use of our approach to further delve in, into the role of these drivers in other levels of analysis. Some of the key points uh, to develop in future studies include advancing available information on drivers, on aspects such as the imbalance in drivers' data. We know that some drivers have been much more studied than others. Changes in driver dominance over space and time. There is very limited information uh, for most of the drivers in this regard. The magnitude of the, of the drivers across the different indicators of biodiversity to better understand how these drivers operate in the different aspects of, bi of biodiversity. Improving modeling by accounting, accounting for <clears throat> drivers' interactions and giving them weight, different weights depending on the context and the scale at which they occur. Improving the scenario frameworks to, to better reflect uh, the complex interactions between people and nature in aspects such as worldviews, uh, uh, and uh, better, to better reflect the mismatch between, th that exists between policies, management, and science, for example, in, in terms of time frames and scales. And all of this points to the need for comprehensive approaches to address this point uh, in future studies. And as a key contribution to advancing this point, our methodology uh, can be used to assess the impact of these drivers at any spatial, uh, temporal, or theme-specific context, provided that we have the, the, the data, of course. And in addition to that, our method can be tailored to the needs of different social actors, uh, providing key information to, to policymakers at the different levels of governance, and uh, laying an essential scientific basis uh, to achieve effective mitigation actions. Thank you.